There are lots of ways to share stories online. There are so many platforms that you can use and facilitate. The resources are limitless. There's a saying that there's no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. In today's world technological advancement, people are more open and have a big advantage to publish anything online within seconds. With all of these revolutions, technology has made our lives easier, faster, better, and more fun. Good morning, Blackmates and Momnardo. We are the Group 9 consists of four members, Ignacio, Rivera, Tolonghari, and Ortega. We will present to you the last topic of our multimedia storytelling subject, the uploading of stories in an online platform. For this topic, we will have a short recap about all the lessons we had in the past, and we named our discussion today, Share Your Story, a How-to Guide for Digital Storytelling. An Overview Digital storytelling uses multimedia tools to bring narratives to life. Digital stories can be used to explain a concept, to reflect on a personal experience, to retell a historical event, or to make an argument. Digital stories are typically videos that combine audio, images, and video clips to tell a story. Digital storytelling is all around us. It helps us to connect to people, no matter where they are located. Digital storytelling may seem intimidating, but really, there are simple tools you can use in your daily life that can also be used to create a digital story. Many other resources that are available online are identified by our group. Using the information that you will hear today in this how-to guide, you can plan, organize, and make your own digital story that can inspire others even if you've never done it before. Here's a step-by-step -step planning tools to help you. Happy storytelling! Let us now proceed on how to make a digital storytelling. Step 1. Developing idea. First is brainstorming. Ang proseso ng paggawa ng digital story ay bigger to smaller or general to specific. Sa pamamagitan ng brainstorming ay mailalapag natin ang lahat ng ideas natin na may isip natin at kung ano ang gusto nating may pakita sa ating audience. Isa itong paraan para mas lalong ma-refine yung story natin. We can listen and read for topics. Pwede ding about your experience, personal knowledge, and recovery journey. Or you may ask your friends, family, teachers, or classmates. Digital storytelling can be fiction or non-fiction. Depende sa story na napupusuan natin gawin. With this, we can develop our vision after generating many ideas. A great story needs a focus. Dito ay ma-anticipate natin kung anong mararamdaman at malalaman ng audience sa pakikinig o pagnood na nagawa nating story. Then decide a best way on how to achieve this goal. Here's an example. With the help of this graph, I can list down my ideas. What are some story ideas I would like to share? I want to share the story of the kids living in the streets. Example, what is your connection to this topic? Is it motivating? Yes, the goal here is to showcase the life of the kids on how they survive their daily life and what are their dreams. Second, is it relatable? Yes, because we have our own difficulties and it can be an eye-opener to those who, who isn't aware of their situation. Can you tell this story in just a few minutes? Yes, at least three to four minutes. What sort of preparation do you need to do to be able to tell this story? Example is, do you need to gather details from other people or conduct any background research? I need to gather details from the kids who are living in the street in order to complete my story and do a background checking on how many street children are there. Lastly, is there supporting material that you can use to help to, to tell your story? I can provide photo, video, um, ang mga data na galing sa pag-research ko to support my story. After that, what is the topic of my story? The life of the 
street children. Step 2. Plan. Once you have your idea for your story, you can develop a plan to organize both your thoughts and resources. Set goals. Mag-set ka ng goals for your planning progress. Sa pamamagitan nito, matatrack mo kung ano yung naging progress mo and kung ano ba yung mga natapos mo from beginning till the end. Matutulungan din itong maging manageable yung project mo. Next is identify your audience. Importante yung malaman natin kung sino ang mga taong marireach ng story natin para malaman natin kung paano natin i-deliver yung story natin. Ang story ba natin ay para sa certain group of age or for a particular community of color or religion? Your target audience is one of the important factors to be considered in creating a story. Next is get resources to help with making digital story. Pwedeng galing ito sa internet, pwedeng galing sa library, pwedeng galing um, malapit sa atin, sa library malapit sa atin. And pwede din tayo magtanong sa mga taong nakapaligid sa atin. Ask around if you need a certain expert or tool. Some basic technology resources include smartphone, video camera or microphone, PowerPoint, YouTube accounts, and social media accounts or emails. Next is Think about access. How your audience can get an access to your story. Section 508 is a law requiring the federal government to offer all people including those with disabilities the ability to access government products like videos or reports. For video to be accessible, the person watching it must be able to understand what is happening in both the visual and audio portion of the video. An accessible video means that a person can understand the message no matter his or her disability. Next is disclosure. Deciding whether to, to share your recovery story publicly is a very hard decision and you are the only person who can decide whether it is the right choice. Think about what might happen after you sharing your story publicly and weighs the pros and cons. The Honest, Open, and Found program recommends the following Activities. Consider the pros and cons of sharing your story. First is identity. Think about your identity and your mental illness or substance use disorder. Do you view yourself as a person with a behavioral health condition? You can decide how you frame your identity. Next is cost and benefits. Write down the cost and benefits of disclosing your story so you can decide whether or not to share or how much to share. Costs include reasons why you might regret sharing your story. Benefits include reasons why sharing your story will help others. Next is goals. What do you hope to achieve by telling your story? Write out your goals. Expectations. What do you expect will happen after you have told your story? In what positive or negative ways are you expecting people to react? How will you handle their reactions? Last is support. Sharing your story of recovery publicly is a big deal, especially if this is the first time you are sharing it. With so many emotions involved, it can be a difficult decision to make alone. Is there someone in your life who can support you in a making decision, such as family, peers, or a counselor? In step 2, we have here another graph to help us clarify our purpose in making a story. Why are you telling this story? To spread awareness about the lives of street children, to showcase the struggles they are facing in their daily life. What impact might your story have on other people? The realization on how children manage to live in the street reflects on their daily life, having a roof and a comfortable bed to sleep in. What do you want to achieve by telling this story? I want everyone to know what it means to be as three children and that despite of our status in life, we are all equal in having our problems and difficulties. Who must you reach to, as to achieve your goals? People who want to help street children. And the resources. What do you need to complete this project? The interviewees as my primary sources. 
the children in the street, photos and videos, and info that I gathered in doing my research with the help of internet. Next is permission. In here, uh, you can step back and ask yourself if you are ready to share your story publicly. Make a list of the benefits and drawbacks if you are not sure. If your role is to help another person to tell his or her story, make sure you have informed them about the process and received permission to film and share the story. Now, it is your turn to do this activity. Do you have some ideas you like to share? What is your topic? Why are you telling this story and what impact to other people? What are your goals and who are your audiences? What are your resources and the permission and the benefits and drawbacks? Now that we are done with step 1 and step 2, the next step will be discussed by Ms. Ortega. Step 3. Outline or script. The outline for the digital story is a key part of the process. Having a well thought out, written, or drawn outline helps reach goals related to time and purpose. Outlining is a helpful practice to develop a general idea of what your story will be and how it will progress. Start by planning out the message that you want your story to convey. If you plan to use an interviewer, develop the outline together so that you and the interviewer are comfortable with the script and can create a great product. Think of what can I include in my digital story to help the audience understand, believe, and remember. Step 4. Storyboard Storyboarding refers to a way of planning for all the things that will appear in the digital story, such as music, pictures, words, text, photos, and video. Storyboard help storytellers to picture the entire story from start to finish. Storyboarding goes hand in hand with outlining and inspires ideas for organization. They often inspire new ideas for organization of virtual effects, show gaps, and help improve the video's quality. Think about the place where you will be filming or recording and any challenges you may need to address. Example, lighting, noise, and background. This example of storyboard shows all the things that will appear in a digital story, such as music, pictures, words, text, photos, and video. Storyboard helps storytellers to picture the entire story. Step 5. Film and Record Sometimes, you will want to film yourself. For this step, you'll need some tools including a way to record video and audio. You can certainly use a smartphone or tablet, but a video camera and microphones use will result in better quality. Before recording, practice using the tools so you know how to use them. Film in a quiet place and make sure that the lights are bright enough to see the person, but not too brightly that they appear washed out. If you are using a microphone, move its position to get the best sound, usually about 7 inches from the speaker's mouth. If you are filming someone, rather than yourself, show the person to look at the camera and talk with them about how you will start and stop the filming. Try filming few things. Brief test shots to work out any issues with the sound, video, or delivery. Don't worry about making small mistakes as they can be fixed later. Remember to test the tools that you will use first before recording. Tips for appearing on camera Try practicing your question and answers aloud before the interview. Keep clothing small and avoid busy patterns. Avoid noisy jewelry or attire. This can disturb microphones and be distracting to viewers. Be relaxed and have fun. Your message is the most important part of the interview. For this step, it also includes adding visual and audio parts. Digital stories can have different visual and audio options, such as photos, video clips, 
text on screens, voices, or a video of the storyteller. These things add interest to a story and help give attention to certain things. For visual parts, this includes taking photos, videos, scanning old photos or drawings, and collecting images and materials from other locations. Audio parts. This includes recording and editing voices and recording or finding music or sound effects. When doing this, you should also be aware of copyright rules. And always, cite your sources, guys. Step 6. Finish The editing phase is where the planning and recording come together. This is where combine visual and audio parts to create a final product. Choosing the right tools. There are many tools available to make and share stories. It's not limited to any particular technology. Storytellers do not have used professional tools, but sometimes a smartphone, that is all you need. Free software or apps might fit your needs, just as well as or better than paid software apps. In editing, there are also helpful tools for new storytellers. There are many tools available for digital storytelling that provides basic features a novice can typically master. There are many options available, but storytellers could use the ones they are comfortable using. Here are some video editing, audio recording, um, and photo editing software. Moving forward, now that we've finished creating our story, it's time for you to be heard, publish, and share. Whether you want to make your story public or share it only with few people, you have a lot of online platforms to choose from. From our previous discussions, we were taught of the things that we need to consider in creating a story and one of which is our target audience. This could also help us in deciding where and how to publish our story. All the more with the objective of your story. Who are your target audience? What is the main point of your story? What is the purpose? And also considering these questions, how would you want to convey your story? How do you express yourself? What art form can you relate to? What art form can you do? Can help you figure out which digital storytelling tool would work for you. With that, these are the types of storytelling that you can use to tell better stories. How would you want to share your story? Oral storytelling is telling a story through voice and gestures. Like storytelling itself, the tradition of oral storytelling is ancient and cross cultures. The oral tradition can take many forms through a song, epic poems, chants, rhymes, and more. This form of storytelling could be a vehicle for any type of story. With the advent of new forms of technology like radio and podcasts, the art form of oral storytelling now has the ability to reach millions of people. You can share your story through podcasts. Podcasts are usually original audio or video recordings but can also be recorded broadcasts of a television or radio program, a lecture, a performance, or other event. A podcast is a recorded program of talk or music made available over the internet as a file that a user can download to a personal device for easy listening. One of the best platforms for podcasts is Spotify. Spotify is a digital music podcast and video service that gives you access to millions of songs and other content from creators all over the world. Getting your podcast or music on Spotify requires distributors who handle licensing, distribution, and pay streaming royalties. These distributors meet the highest standards for quality metadata and anti-infringement measures. Most distributors charge a fee or commission. Each service is unique, so a little more research for this is necessary. 
Another platform is SoundCloud. It's a popular music and podcast hosting platform. The good thing is that you can embed any podcast episode from SoundCloud by simply placing the URL anywhere in your WordPress posts and pages. SoundCloud is free for up to three hours of uploads. Their free plan gives a good starting point for beginners who want to test the waters first. With oral storytelling, you can also share your story through a song. You can use Spotify and SoundCloud to share your music, as well as YouTube. YouTube is a free video sharing website that makes it easy to watch online videos. You can even create and upload your own videos to share with others. Written storytelling. As long as there have been written words, there have been written stories. As societies developed alphabets, oral and visual forms of storytelling were transcribed into written short stories and epics. With written storytelling, you can share your story through Blog Blogging refers to writing, photography, and other media that's self-published online. Blogging started as an opportunity for individuals to write diary-style entries. But it has since been incorporated into websites for many businesses. There are also these common types of blogs which you can choose from. Personal blogs, business blogs, niche blogs, and affiliate blogs. Here are some of the most used online platforms for blogging are basically written storytelling. Number one, Tumblr. It's a place to express yourself, discover yourself, and bond over the stuff you love. It's where your interests connect you with your people. Tumblr is a microblogging and social networking website that allows users to post multimedia and other content to a short-form blog. Users can follow other users' blogs, and bloggers can also make their blogs private. Digital storytelling is all around us. Videos, podcasts, and commercials use words paired with images to share meaningful stories with a wide range of people. Technology is a powerful tool that has transformed the way that we tell stories. The rise of television, film, and radio has given great storytellers and a wider platform that, than ever, and has, in turn, led to the rise of new and innovative storytelling techniques. The internet allows us to have access to a seemingly endless library of compelling stories. In particular, the rise of blogging and social media have reframed the kind of stories we interact with on a daily basis. With social media, we are all storytellers, trying to make sense of our own origin story one post at a time. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram are the platforms that we usually utilize to share our story. But aside from that, there are other platforms that we can actually use. The first one is WordPress. WordPress is a renowned website offering free website hosting services as well as a platform for bloggers to showcase their talent. With a simple user interface and strong admi administration controls, it has a great community with thousands of blogs on multiple topics to connect with like-minded people. The, the second one is Blogger. Blogger is a Google-owned full-blown blogging website popular amongst artists and those who like to showcase their art, writing, and other skills. Starting your blog on Blogger is a fairly easy process. And even a person without enough skills and technology can do it easily. I must say this is perfect for beginners. Virtual, virtual storytelling. Virtual storytelling is the art of communicating messages, emotions, narrative, and information in a way which reaches viewers at a deep and lasting level. Delivered through rich visuals, these are recorded from the real world are created by artists and virtual thinkers. And just like a flat pack furniture, it comes in a lot of shapes and sizes. It could be a post on Instagram, a political cartoon in a newspaper, a graphic novel, a well-shot YouTube video, some visual notes, or an animation. This list 
is far from exhaustive because visuals and the storytelling they deliver play a role in our life at most every level. It has unparalleled potential to generate traffic and convert leads at every stage of the sales funnel. No content marketing strategy is complete without it. Mediums for visual storytelling. First is Dirty Hands Learning, a friendly iOS app with video tutorials to help users create a video story by adding narration to images. Second is Animaker Class, a drag and drop tool for students that also features such as group management, an in-app messenger, and task tracking. For the last time, why you should share your story? The answer is because sharing stories is the only way we can connect as humans. Learning more about someone and their story enables us to understand them on a different level and hence from a deeper connection. Why is it important to share your story? Why your story matters? Mm. Finding similarities with other people help us live happy and healthy lives. Your life may feel ordinary to you, but it might seem extraordinary to someone. Every story shared is a chance to make someone feel less alone. Why is your telling story or storytelling is so important? Telling stories is one of the most powerful means that leaders have to influence, teach, and inspire. What makes storytelling so effective for learning? For starters, storytelling forges connections among people and between people and ideas. Stories convey the culture, history, and values that unite people. And take note that it can be a healing and powerful experience for you too. Using a digital format allows you to share your story in a powerful way with a wider community online. So, here you go guys. We hope that you've learned a lot from us today. Ian Lavanzan quote, Tell your story because your story will heal you and it will heal someone else. Once again, there's a saying that there's no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. So go on and continue to inspire others. You never know when or how you have helped someone. Thank you.